Hello, thank you for taking part in our first ever virtual Global Roundtable to explore pathways to financing a resilient future. The Global Roundtable provided a platform to showcase leadership and help shape the agenda for the sustainable finance sector's response to the critical challenges facing our society, economy and planet. We saw more than 3,000 participants joining the two days for a stellar lineup of speakers led by Amina Mohammed, Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations. Her opening keynote address reminded participants that sustainable finance really wields an enormous opportunity to transform our markets, our businesses, societies and the environment. Um, UNEP's Executive Director Inga Anderson highlighted the need for the finance sector to really show leadership now to address the climate, nature and pollution crises and to stop financing coal. She highlighted the civil society advisory body that UNIPFI is establishing for the principles for responsible banking, which is an example of transparency and accountability. Kristalina Georgieva, Managing Director of the IMF, emphasized the importance of tackling climate change and enhancing sustainable finance to mobilize green investments for financing a resilient future. The European Central Bank President, Christine Lagarde, warned that finance that claims to be green may not be green enough and said more intervention is needed by legislators and regulators, such as the EU taxonomy, to indicate, indicate green and variations of brown. Mark Carney, the UN Special Envoy on Climate Action and Finance, noted the importance of translating principles into action and called for banks to link executive pay to the goals of the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. UNIPFI's head Eric Usher highlighted the critical role of alignment of portfolios with international frameworks to protect people and planet. Five bank CEOs, all signatories to the UN Principles for Responsible Banking, discussed their progress on implementing the principles one year after their launch. And during the session on race to net zero, Gunter Tellinger released the Net Zero Asset Owner Alliance target setting protocol for consultation, indicating that a 2025 emissions reduction target of 16 to 29% will be applied by the 30 members who together manage 5 trillion in assets. The event also saw the launch of a report on financing circularity and a UNEP paper on building a green recovery, taking lessons from the Great Recession. There's also today the launch of a TCFD transition risk heat map and guidance on implementing TCFD within financial institutions. As well as that, we've had in-depth discussions looking at topics including the role and potential conflicts of legal frameworks in making impact management central to the sustainable finance system, the importance of climate disclosures under frameworks such as the TCFD recommendations. Meanwhile, regional sessions were held for North America, Latin America, Asia Pacific, Africa and the Middle East where we have members across the world working on sustainable finance. We heard about the need for alignment and consistency on data and disclosure to transform our socio-economic system and deliver on the SDGs, the Paris Agreement and the biodiversity goals. A message that was echoed throughout the two days was that financial institutions really need to go further to speed up the transformation to achieve the SDGs and the Paris Agreement with the support of policymakers to steer the transition to a sustainable and resilient economy. We're working with more than 350 members now with over 20% growth in our membership over the past two years each year. And we are working with banks, insurers and investors and over 100 supporting institutions to accelerate the finance sector's contribution to the Sustainable Development Goals and Paris Agreement. Our members are involved in many of the leadership initiatives featured during the roundtable and they're working in collaboration under our Rich Work Programme. We provide them with a shared space to incubate industry approaches to implement the principles for responsible banking, principles for state sustainable insurance, and to advance responsible investment. UNIPFI provides technical capacity building and training for financial institutions. We're really working to equip the finance sector with the insights, methodologies, and expertise to shape sustainable finance market practice. To finance a resilient future, we really need policymakers, regulators and supervisors to support the growth of a sustainable financial system that addresses climate, nature and pollution crises and social inequality. So with that, look to 2021. We will be seeing the Climate Adaptation Summit to promote integrated efforts to improve resilience. That will be in January. 
the UN's UN Environment Assembly, the fifth UN Environment Assembly will be held in February, which will look at action to protect and restore nature and nature-based solutions to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. The Convention on Biological Diversity post-2020, UN Climate Change Conference or COP26 in November will ensure that all countries ratchet up their decarbonization ambition and live up to the objectives they've committed to in the, 20, in the 2015 Paris Agreement. Even before 2021, we would like to invite civil society organizations to apply to join the civil society advisory body to work with all signatory banks, supporting the effective implementation of the principles for responsible banking and helping us to maintain a high level of ambition and transparency. The call for applications is accessible on UNIPFI's website and it's open until the 15th of December. For UNIPFI members, please also remember to vote in our AGM um, and the, the voting is on UNPFI's extranet. As you've heard over the last two days, parts of the financial sector are now responding to global challenges by translating science, creativity and intelligence into strategies and solutions to redesign our economies and manage the impacts of our development. Now is the time for the financial sector as a whole to scale up ambition, to fulfill its role in delivering a sustainable economy. As Sir David Attenborough concludes in his latest film, A Life on Our Planet, we now have the opportunity to create the perfect home for ourselves and restore the rich, healthy and wonderful world that we inherited. All we need is the world to do so by acting together. We'll share your progress in creating a financial sector that positively impacts and serves people and planet at our next Global Roundtable in 2022, which will also mark UNIPFI's 30th birthday. In the meantime, please complete the survey in the link below your screen right now and in the column to the left to give us your feedback and inform plans for our future events. The roundtable doesn't end here. You can explore the reports launched, share the session recordings, respond to the consultation, um, and also join ongoing webinar series and next year's regional roundtables. I'd like to thank once again our gold sponsors Moody's and Reprisk and silver sponsors Carbon Trust and also our partners Responsible Investor, Sintar Green Finance Series, Climate Kick, the European Banking Federation, Impact Management Project, Insurance Europe and Toronto Financial in Finance International. I would also like to thank all of our speakers and also the UNIPFI team for putting this event together, most of all Mr. Fitchaudry, Ali Yobek, Munimov and Nicholas Bruno, without whom it wouldn't have been possible. And thank, thank, of course, all of you for joining us. We'll hope you'll take the leadership featured during the 16th Global Roundtable forwards to help repurpose finance so that it's fit for the future. Thank you.